light travels in a straight line. Take a laser pointer and spray some particles in front of it and whoa, rectilinear propagation. You can clearly see the straight path that light takes. This property of light was well known back in the 16th century, where they'll punch a hole in one of the walls in the dark room and an image of the outside world will be projected on the opposite side. And if you draw a ray diagram, you'll notice that only the rays of light going straight through that tiny little pinhole will make it to the screen. Since then, many of us have used the same exact technology to observe the solar eclipse. In fact, you can convert your fancy expensive camera into a pinhole camera too. First, you take off the body cap, use a compass to find the center of the lens by drawing arcs that pass through the center of the lens. Then, you make a tiny, tiny hole right through the middle. Lastly, you replace that fancy expensive lens with that body cap, and then voila! Whoa! 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 Free lens to take around with you on Worldwide Pinhole Camera Day! Last Sunday of April every year! Back to the laser now. You can see on the far end of the room that there's a very bright, intense white dot over there. And if I go over there, if I still have to cover up the top part and the bottom part of this laser light, you can see that the size of the laser point gets smaller and smaller and it starts to shrink. But something really strange happens when I make this whole size really, really small. Let's take a look. What I have over here is an aperture grating. On one end of the aperture grating, the size of the opening is rather large, and on the far end, it gets smaller and smaller. Let's see what happens to the laser light when I place this in front. So initially, you would expect to see that the top and bottom piece are cut off, and that's perfectly fine. But as I drag this glass towards the left, the size of the opening gets smaller and smaller. On the far end, you can see that the intensity of light, it does decrease. However, strangely enough, the dot also gets taller and taller and taller. Why is that? Well, let's figure that out on today's episode on diffraction. In the 17th century, Sir Isaac Newton and Huygen had two totally different views of light. Newton said that light is like a particle that travels in a straight line. Huygen, on the other hand, said that light behaves like a wave, where each wave is like a tiny wavelet, where when spread out, it creates the next bigger wave. And when the tiny little wavelets of the bigger wave spread out, it makes an even bigger wave. If you treat light like a wavefront, you'll see that the path that the light takes is perpendicular to the wave. And if the wavefront has to pass through a tiny opening, that wavefront has to bulge through the opening and curve around the corner. This phenomenon is known as diffraction, a common problem in photography. Aperture is the opening inside the lens that allows light to pass through. Either you can let a lot of light pass through, or you can let very little light pass through. Typically, an f-stop that's very low would have an opening that's very large, and a high f-stop has an opening that's really small. However, as you continue to reduce the size of the opening beyond f11, not only does less light pass through, the image starts to get blurrier and blurrier. Here's a picture of the viewpoint from the top of Quarry Rock. Let's zoom into the boat down below. At f6.3, the picture appears rather sharp. You can clearly see the details of the ship and read the text written on the sailboat's boom. And at f8, the picture is at its sharpest. However, you'll notice that as I continue to reduce the aperture's opening, not only am I allowing less light to enter through the camera lens, the image gradually becomes blurrier and blurrier. And by the time I've reached an f-stop of 1 over 40, you wouldn't have known that there was text written on the boom in the first place. You've now reached the diffraction limit where the diffraction now results in a very blurry photograph. The photons of light are now bending around the tiny little opening of the aperture and causing the waves of light to spread out, just like in the laser pointer demo. I'll show you what I mean with this ripple tank. Come over here with me. What I have here is a classic ripple tank. Up above, a tank of water, with a horizontal actuator that dips into the water, up and down, up and down. You can see the path that the water travels is 90 degrees to the formation of the crest. If I still have to block this water pathway with an obstruction, you can see that the water now starts to curve around the corner. Anything that behaves as a wave will exhibit this phenomenon. And if I still have to block the other side, resulting in a small aperture opening, 
you'll see that the waves start to ripple in all directions. This phenomenon is known as diffraction. That's a common problem we have in photography when you increase your f-stop to very high numbers. Light doesn't travel in a straight line anymore. Instead, it starts to bend around the corner, causing the light to focus on different parts of the film. And that's what results in the blurry image. Diffraction is a lot more noticeable at lower frequencies than at higher frequencies. You'll see that if I slow down the wavefront actuator, the crest of the waves are spread further apart. As these longer waves pass through the opening, it bulges out more severely, resulting in a greater diffraction. As they speed up the wavefront actuator, the wavelengths become shorter, and the waves pass through the opening experience less diffraction. You'll notice that a beam begins to form. With regards to light, the wavelength of blue light is shorter than red light, so diffraction is less apparent. And if you're into infrared photography, diffraction becomes incredibly apparent. At these very low frequencies, the wavefront bulges out severely through the opening. And that's why in infrared photography, it's very challenging to focus a sharp image. But we'll save that adventure for another episode. And if you stuck around this far in this episode and you want to learn more about the fun and exciting world of science, consider checking out my channel where I have lots of videos on science and science-related fun. And if you like what you see over there, consider subscribing. Until our next adventure, how about one more demo? Let's see what happens when I jack this up really high. Whoa, this is getting really hypnotic now. This is what you call a single-slit interference pattern.